Hello, good morning, good day everyone. It's Meredith, I'm here with our message for Wednesday, the 20th of April, 2022. I find myself in a whimsical mood. So we are doing a mermaid tarot and a mermaid oracle. And let's get started with the moon phase. We remain in Sagittarius, the moon is waning. And in the very late, late hours of the day, the moon's going to move into Capricorn. So both signs are represented here on the table. And our mermaid oracle is going to share with us what's on offer energetically. From the moon phase, our first card is ask for help. I feel an invitation as I look at this card. It's more of a call out to those we would collaborate, connect, and communicate with. I, I do feel a sense of community here, and I feel it is the community of our closest, most cherished friends, family, and beloveds. So I feel, yeah, I feel a call out for, or an invitation to collaborate and communicate on something we're holding in heart space whatever that may be. <laughs> I also feel the energy of community here for the sharing of ideas or even the sharing of energetic investment activity for, for projects. Let's see what comes next. Oh, <laughs> oh my favorite word of all, patience. Yes, I know there's a tone on that one. I switch patience up to allowing. For me, that's an energy upgrade. Patience uh patience can lead to frustrated waiting. And I don't know about you, but I don't wait well. I'm much more of a doer and a beer. So Allowing is doing and being simultaneously. So if we're putting the word out, if we are putting the call out to our tribe of people for whatever reason, for whatever kind of sharing and collaboration, we've got to allow for that to come in. I feel the energy of reciprocity here. What we invest, we, we receive. What we give, we receive. So next we have... Oh, this is interesting. The future. <laughs> well, that happens in the now. So uh, we're putting the call out in the now for an energy that is becoming in the oncoming. So this feels like a message of investment in the now that pays reward forward. And it's something that we are interested in sharing and then here's the acceptance card be prepared to accept what you've called out for yes i like it so communicate collaborate today share your ideas uh seek out wise people in your sphere of influence and allow them to offer their suggestion and their wisdom to whatever project or idea that you have at hand all right, let's move into, what's this deck? The, <laughs> the Awakened Soul. Yes, a message from our soulful presence. And we have, oh, how sweet. Gaia, this is the, this is the being on the box. I love when we get the flagship card. Okay, so there's Gaia. See, look at the magic. Look at the energy swirling. Everything's popping. Look how the presence of Gaia is so centered and grounded and, well, present. <laughs> there is a nurturing energy in the air, and I feel that beautiful connection here with the Mermaid Oracle cards. You know, we're tending something, and we, as I mentioned, we are in the waning moon phase, and isn't this just the most beautiful time to hold something? in our hands, to our heart, to invest our exquisite magical energy in, and even to share that, to gather information, to collect wisdom, to garner our own gains. So 
a lovely message here today. I don't necessarily feel that there's a tremendous amount of physical action going on in these cards. I do feel, though, that there is a great energetic action going on in the cards. So it's all about the energies of reciprocity and what we put in we get out and then we have what the divine puts on it which is way more than we bargained for and usually full of surprise and delight as we have seen time and again in the cards okay so put your energy into something that pays the reward of being and doing in the now and pays reward forward it benefits many <laughs> not just one Okay, let's take a look at the energy atmosphere according to the tarot cards. Our first is the Four of Cups. Oh, I am so excited to see this card. You know I have a completely different take on it. We talk about it constantly when we turn this card over. And it does feel like one of those, this is a garner your gain cards. As I was just mentioning here, garnering your gains. This is counting our blessings. So bear with me for a moment. Because I was watching another tarot reader on YouTube. I don't remember the channel, the reader, or even the deck. But I did a screenshot of the Four of Cups in that tarot reader's message. Let me see if I can find it quickly. Yes. This is so neat. Check that out. What an interesting take on the Four of Cups, and it is so in alignment with how I feel about this card. You know traditional tarot shows us the Four of Cups as a person sort of pouting and, you know, morning after the night before sort of attitude, like, hey, the party's over. Though instead, in this person's particular deck, you see the Three Cups pouring into the Fourth Cup, and that's just the wonder of the Four of Cups. First of all, I know, one more look, folks. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Okay, so there's that. So that's just the thing with the Four of Cups. It's, it's a four, it's super stable. It speaks to the celebration. Wow, it even speaks to these beautiful Oracle cards too, because this is about investment. And sometimes there is a period of patience and or allowing where it looks like nothing is happening, yet everything is happening. Big energies are moving. So that's what I'm getting out of the, the Oracle cards. And, you know, then let's add the energy of Gaia to it as well, right? The Earth Mother, whoa, pretty powerful. So traditionally we see three spilled cups and you know, one cup coming in from behind, that divine hand offering the ace of cups, right? And what an interesting take, because I was just showing you on the four of cups, there is a great stable fulfillment underway. We may be in collaboration about it as well. This may be the very best time to share some of our ideas with those we know, love, and trust who would support our dreams. And the collaboration may bear more fruit for us. So Four of Cups, I feel great stable abundance, wonderful surprise and delight off this card. It's certainly not one of those apathetic cards as it is traditionally touted in tarot according to my intuition. So go with the flow and allow what's coming to come. Let it arrive, let it be, and celebrate the journey because there's so much more to come out of the Four of Cups. And do remember that's the Ace of Cups to the power of four. Our next card is, oh, the Queen of Cups. <laughs> yeah, there's the deep knowing. There's our inner being, our inner wisdom. And I feel in connection to the Oracle cards, our intuitive collaboration, again, with those we know, love, and trust within the Oracle cards and in this gorgeous moon phase where we get to relax and be at ease. There is no sense of urgency. There is no rush. The energies are moving beautifully and they're moving in the direction of great abundance. So follow the inner knowing. The Queen of Cups is emotionally awake, aware, alert, 
intimate. And this is the energy that we thrive upon in self-relationship. So bring your emotional quotient right out into your sphere of influence. And this is where you will be met by those you choose to connect and collaborate with. And that energy is truly Gaia magical and so creative. Lean into that. Next, we have strength. Oh, what a great strength card. This is a new deck for me, so I've not seen all these cards. <laughs> Look at the whale. Yes, that's awesome. This is inner strength and some, some aspect of this is setting ourselves free. Of course, that's the truth of the strength card. I come back around to the energy of vulnerability, sitting right there next to the queen, being so emotionally awake and alive and interactive on that level takes great strength because in our sovereignty, believe it or not, we are somewhat, <laughs> not even somewhat, we are greatly vulnerable because it takes tremendous courage to simply be yourself to not be changed by some cultural norm or expectation, to show up truly as you are. And we saw this in the shapeshifter card the other day, yesterday, I think it was, yesterday's reading. It does take courage to allow your raw, wild inner self to be uh, free, not shaped, not transformed or stifled by an expectation. And I feel the strength card is so representative of us breaking free of the mantle of belief system that is handed to us, handed down to us. Again, well-intentioned, as mentioned in the previous readings, uh, well-intentioned as it is, though somehow it waters us down. <laughs> and we're not content with that. We don't feel fulfilled by that. So I love that we have this queen who's saying, bring your most vulnerable aspect out into the world. Break free of whatever chains are holding you down, holding you back from being the full raw truth of who you are and go forward with that. So I love that this is happening in a moon phase where we are at ease, we are in grace, we are in relaxation. We are in even a little bit of retreat holiday mode in the moon cycle. And we are contemplating these feelings within us and contemplating just allowing them to be. It's beautiful. Let's see where this energy is going to the next card. Knight of Cups, yes. Oh, ooh, that's cool. We're gonna have to shuffle more cards because you know that the Knights move energy between cards. And we have the Queen with all this stable, overflowing abundance moving into the strength and truth of who we are in motion on the Knight of Cups, carrying the Ace of Cups. And that Knight... I love how this card is done. He, he, like the queen, appears to be consulting the inner knowing, the inner soulful presence. So where is the night going? What is the momentum and direction of these cards? Okay, popping out of the deck, we have two. And our first is, oh, <laughs> do I have it in the frame? Yes, I do. Okay. The King of Wands. Look at him. We're moving into our divine masculine energy. I love this. We've got beautiful, soft, receptive, powerful, intuitive, divine feminine energy with quite a force behind it moving into the king of wands fiery passionate motivated creative will engaging the self mastery of all of our skill and our talent and then coming with that king is the eight of coins so continue to do this 
this is the keep doing what you're doing because it's working for you even if back to the oracle cards patience allowing you don't necessarily have evidence for all the strength behind the dreams that you're holding gaia in heart space and tending like your own spiritual garden it's all blossoming so perhaps it's this message of the oracle cards encouraging us to be in collaboration with again those we know love and trust because they are of equal measure in this type of energy and we can meet one another there and continue to king of wands inspire uh one another yeah all right let's see what's going on from the bottom of the deck the unseen what does the universe have to say <laughs> well looky here here is the emperor and look at him wow poseidon right Ooh. There's some seriously powerful energy and this, look at this. You put that emperor right underneath the queen of cups and the strength card and you, you have the picture of just what kind of wave is rolling through you at this time, evidence or no, right? This is what is beneath the surface. So there's the emperor, the, the know-it-all, the experienced it all, the forever student, the forever teacher. And that's Aries direct fire energy. So great momentum, great energy, incredible motivation. So eight of coins, don't stop now. Keep going, keep doing what you're doing because you're bringing an emperor quality energy to what you are tending in heart space and what is becoming. Next we have, <laughs> this is excellent confirmation, the high priestess. There she is in all her glory. And, you know, one of her messages is discretion. And she will not share anything, we'll say before it's time. Not that time is a factor here. Though she is, she is the epitome of divine timing, we'll say. And as mentioned over here in the Oracle cards, it's a great time to collaborate. And what I feel is the energy channeled through and with the Emperor, Queen of Cups, Minor Arcana version of the High Priestess. Now, it's now. The time is now to share what we have been tending and to take some action on it. And to continue to collaborate collectively with those we know love and trust because they have a lot to add they've got they've got wisdom and experience that we don't so this is a wonderful opportunity for sharing our next card is yeah, look at that because we have the nine of cups again this card has been so present for us that's the ace of cups to the power of nine this is our cups spilling over and i believe we saw it in either Monday or Tuesday's reading, we saw the Nine of Cups, the table was set, everything was in readiness to receive. And I feel this is further confirmation. And what we're receiving out of the Nine Cups is all this wisdom, all this experience, our own and those we connect with. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Next card, the Tower. You know, that's a card to celebrate here in the reading because the message we've had from the High Priestess, from the Death card in recent readings, recent weeks, has been make way for what's coming. And doesn't it look so interesting to see the Nine of Cups right next to the Tower because it's what's spilling out of these cups that really takes that Tower the rest of the way out. So we have a very stable foundation, excuse me, in the Four of Cups. And the message here is prepare for the abundance of your heart space. You've got to make way for it. We've got that message over and over again because the universe is saying, yo, incoming. <laughs> Heads up, folks. So make way for all that we've been tending in heart space. Gosh. I know that the message is repetitive. I know even in this reading, I am being repetitive so I feel the energy that is just thrumming off these cards and it is quite an essence to be in front of as a reader. So I can only imagine how that must feel for you 
tuning into the message itself and feeling that energy strength rise within you. The motivation that comes out of this energy on the tarot table is quite profound at a subtle time in the moon. And isn't that just exquisite? Because the subtle, the simple is profound. So like this whale on the strength card, we are setting ourselves free and allowing the energetic wave that is us in our soulful presence to be set free and go out into this amazing dynamic sphere of influence and create and be and to show up and to be met. Yeah. All right, let's do angel answers. Ask a question. Let these cards confirm something for you. <laughs> the first one popping out of the deck is remain positive, And that is for every person who is not necessarily seeing evidence, back to the Oracle cards over here, of what is becoming, what is in this energetic wave. Or maybe you may not even be feeling your own inner strength and power. I'm coming back to the Emperor, the High Priestess. And I feel that as you go out into your sphere of influence, you will be met there profoundly. And this is inspiring to us. This is what keeps that positive energy flowing. So here we go, flowing back over to the Oracle cards and connecting with their message of collaboration. Next. <laughs> Don't stop. Because it is unlikely that you could anyway. <laughs> I love the unlikely card because when I see that card, something comes to a screeching halt in my own beingness. What do you mean it's unlikely? You know, that's the voice of the ego. And what I really feel on an intuitive level it is, is that it is unlikely that we could miss what's on offer to us. It comes back around to that. You can't miss what you're destined for type of thing. Hence the, the repetition in the cards uh, for many weeks even. Hence the repetition, repetition even in this reading because it's as if the cards are saying, do you get it? Can you see it? <laughs> are your eyes wide open to it? All right, next. Oh, yes. Oh, how perfect. There it is. Communicate clearly. Yes, express yourself. I'm coming back here to the strength card, the real you, no watered down version of you, the raw, soulful presence that is you. <laughs> what is it someone told me? We have a chance of, what is it? One in 400 trillion of actually being here. I may have that number wrong, but it's vast. So. There's no mistake about you being you. So bring you to this beautiful party. All right, last card from the Spirit Animal Oracle. We're pulling one right off the top of the deck and we have one of my favorite creatures on the planet, Elephant Spirit. Learn from the past. There it is. And that summarizes this, this reading beautifully. We've been here before and we have experienced the tremendous blessing of this type of energy wave. And I feel a great connection here between the emperor and the elephant spirit. We have the wisdom, the know-how and the experience. Um, yeah, the experience. So bring that to the now because we are in an amazing rise of becoming in a beautiful moon phase that completely supports that. And... I also feel here as I'm looking at the entire spread, we've got it all. So let's use it all. Let's be all. <laughs> all right. Have a beautiful Wednesday, everybody. Peak of the week. Love, joy, and blessings to each and every one of you. Namaste.